Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we are in standing corn, tall standing corn. We measured some of it out at about 14 and a half feet tall. You can see this cow here, how tall that corn there is. We're gonna be discussing whether or not it's economical to plant corn, graze corn. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and hit that notification bell. Okay, grazing corn. This is something that we've been doing for a fairly decent amount of time. We've grazed a lot of it. We started grazing corn in the fall of 2012. We had a, a stand of corn I had planted, and then we were in the process of transitioning over to a low input system, so we were selling a lot of equipment. When's the perfect time to sell equipment? Right before harvest, right? I advertised my corn picker, not knowing how we were going to harvest our corn. We sold the corn picker in three days and we made $500 on it from what we paid for it. Something in there you want, 162. So we sold the corn picker and we grazed our first stand of corn in 2012. It was a high input crop, it was a GMO crop. It was a Roundup Ready corn. It was pushing right around 200 bushel yield. We went ahead and grazed that and that was our first experience with corn. And one of the things about, there's a lot of things to learn about grazing corn. You can see here, here's our temporary fence. We have this here all run down with the side by side because if this corn, this corn here is the cows knock this over you don't want it to go across the fence and knock the fence down and naturally have cows in the whole cornfield. Trust me, I've had it happen to me. And it's not fun gathering a herd of cows out of a whole field of corn. The cows will go through here in the next hour or so. This whole stand of corn will be knocked over. The corn was planted on June 10th. It's an open pollinated corn. We're no longer using the GMO corns or GMO anything for that matter. It's an open pollinated corn. It's a long season corn. It's like 115 days. And in our area, where we're at most generally, if you're planting picking corn or shelling corn, you want no longer a 95 day corn. An ideal would be 85 day. This here is an open pollinated variety called Silver King. It's the second time we planted Silver King. We've been messing with open pollinated corn. See, we're just, just coming into the blister stage here now. We planted a number of different varieties of open pollinated corns, and we've had mixed success with all of them. We like the Silver King because it doesn't quite come completely into the dent stage. We've You can graze corn whenever it's standing with foyer on it. We try to keep our stuff as close to grass finished as possible, the reason that we're grazing now. And if you're a grass finished producer, this is something that you can do. It will pass your grass finished guidelines. You can graze corn at any stage of growth. We've grazed it from standing in the middle of December to, and I think this here is probably one of the earliest grazings we've ever done on corn. And we've learned by pushing our grazing days into late into the winter, I kind of prefer to graze cool season grasses in the winter time through the snow. Seems to work better for me. And we're going to be doing some grazing videos because we're going to bunk a lot of miss on grazing grass in winter time. But for the most part, this corn here has the feed qualities going downhill. If you want to graze corn at the prime feed quality, you want to graze it at flag stage, and that's right before it tossels out. And we're a little bit past that. As you know me, I like to push things a little bit. I like to make the girls work a little bit harder. Basically, we went around the field and we knocked the corn down so it doesn't get on our fences. Now, I need to caution you if you're going to graze it with ears on it you do not want to give them 
a lot of corn at any one given time because they could either founder or get acidosis. And trust me, you don't want either one of them. The cows consume about half all the leaves, the ear of corn, and about half the stalk. So they get about 50% of what's standing there. And I'm good with that because we need biomass back onto the soil. And this here works extremely well here on our place because of the living microbes and stuff by spring. You'll never find a corn stalk here. You'll, it will be very, very hard to find any corn stalks. Uh, our microbes will break those corn stalks down and they'll be recycled back into the system and they make, make great organic material. I'm going to talk a little bit about the economics of grazing corn. Because I get hit with all the time. That's a high input crop and you're just money, you're just throwing money away. Well, that's not really the case. Right now our cool season grasses, you can see here, this year's got 20 days regrowth. Our cool season grasses are revving up for the second largest production peak that they have throughout the entire year. It's towards the end of August here, usually in September, our cool season grasses ramp up for that second great big flush of grass. So we're able to grow tons and tons of grass. Okay, so we've run the corn down, we've set our fence, we put the cows in there, and we strip graze in the corn because this area here is too small for them to stay in. Being it's a real tall forage, if we were to put a fence, put a back fence on them, we would have issues keeping them in. I just back fence them. I move the back fence every other day because quite frankly, they don't need to be going back to a fixed watering point all the time. It's warm out. We, we have the ability to move the tank. Now, if it's below freezing, then we have to skip from hydrant to hydrant to hydrant. And that works too. But by moving our stock tank, it helps reduce compaction. And you can see it looks like there's mud all over the place on these corn stalks. That's not actually mud, that's cow manure. There's a lot of extra poop in here because of the extra forage and they're just they're just staying you know from here from out clear over there to here the cows spent three days here already and this here will be day four okay let's get into the economics of grazing corn it's something that comes up very very frequently i had to write this down my actual cost of, of establishing this corn and how much it costs us a ton to feed it. Try and get in here so you can watch the cows graze a little bit while I talk. Okay, we have the cost of fertilizer, seed, herbicide, spraying, planting, and labor. Fertilizer is $63 an acre, which is extremely high compared to what we usually pay. Usually it's around $40 an acre. Seed was $40 an acre. It's open pollinated seed, which it's less expensive. Herbicide, $8. Spraying cost, $5 an acre. Planting cost, $25 an acre. You gotta figure your wear and tear and equipment and fuel cost. And of course, labor. Um, that's one thing that a lot of producers fail to add on. You need to pay yourself. You don't work for free. I figured that there's approximately 10 tons of dry matter yield in here, being that this corn is so tall and so thick, we planted it at 30, 32 or 33,000 plants per acre. And I figure there's approximately 10 tons of available dry matter yield. But if we walk out here and look, we know that the cows are not going to consume it all. And I don't want them to consume it all. We need to have a little bit of protection for the soil. And that's what's left of our stock. So they're consuming approximately 50%. So we're going to say we have utilized 50% of that. And I didn't figure in the fertilizer, how much fertilizer is left in those stocks that we're recycling back into the soil. And there's a lot of fertilizer there. So we have five tons to the acre that we're actually consuming. And that costs $166 an acre, five tons that costs $33.20 a ton to produce. I can buy hay for approximately $100 a ton. I buy the cheapest, crappiest hay you can find. Gestational beef cows don't need the highest quality. Now the calves, will put them on a poor quality hay and a 
a little bit higher quality hay because we want them to maintain and slightly gain. That's for buying hay. We no longer make hay here on the farm. When we were making hay, our cost was $130 a ton to make hay. And that might be where you guys question me on that. And I can do a video on it, probably not until winter time if that's something you'd like to see. And I don't even have land costs figured into this equation. Land cost is approximately $30 an acre. Okay, now let's figure we have 100 animal units. We don't have 100 animal units, but it's gonna be a lot easier for just demonstration purposes. We have 100 animal units. I'm figuring that they're gonna need approximately 2.5% of their body weight. So that's 25 pounds of dry matter per day per animal unit. And an animal unit is 1,000 pounds of body weight. And, and how that equates is it's either three animal units is two 1,500 pound cows or three animal units is 3,000 pound cows or three animal units is six 500 pound calves and so on and so forth. You get, get the idea there. So we need one and a quarter tons dry matter yield per acre. We feed our cows in dry matter because we can't feed them in, in pounds because your moisture content changes within your forages all the time. So we feed them on dry matter. When you get everything figured into corn costs, it's gonna cost you approximately $41.50 to feed those 100 animals, which equals out to 41 and a half cents per animal per day. Now, if we we're buying hay, it would be $1.25 per animal per head per day. And if we were making our hay, it would be $1.63 per animal per, per head per day. Does corn pencil in? I think it does. I mean, it's a little bit more work, definitely. You know, preparing a seed bed and, and planting it. We're planting no-till, so we're not tilling anything, which makes it a lot easier, a lot quicker, and a lot faster. But still, you have that time and, time and energy involved in planting corn it's something we do almost every year it, what it does is it helps level out our our line our feeding line because a lot of times you have a real great big high spike in the spring and then you come down and then this time of year in august we're down in the lowest part where our grasses and stuff aren't growing this here can fill that gap so once we get this corn done and we'll be in i figured this cornfield will last us 17 and a half days for three and a half acres i'm gonna throw a, a corn grazing time lapse in it's pretty neat how it works or how they graze it Okay guys, that's about it for the corn grazing video. If you have any questions, don't forget to or just post them in the comments below. Please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you on the next one. Have a great day.